laugh a little bit each time though and we are gonna go ahead and get started here game one of a best of five knights of queens versus pss, 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 pss. and we are seeing a squiffer coming out from uh, team ps there a vanilla squiffer along with a vanilla mini um, so a little bit of an unorthodox um, comp coming out there um, initially from PS. Yeah, even on the side of Knights of Queen, we see some weapons that are fairly common, but typically not in this combination. So we obviously get the squeezer and the ballpoint of CDS coming out. All, I guess, individually fairly common, just... I, I guess you don't usually see them put together that often. One player going down through each side as you see missiles and armor coming out for Team PS. A nice pick there by Dad Yuzza. Um, as they look to get uh, a nice push going here, they do have 17 clams and two players down for Knights of Queen. You see uh, the bubbles coming out there, but getting a nice pick that might be able to stall the push long enough for teammates to come back in. And three do go down for PS, so a nice defense there by Knights of Queens that looked like uh, could have been a damaging push initially for Team PS. Absolutely, and it did look like they were going to go for a super early push before those bridges were even out, but, it, I mean, Knights of Queen obviously pulling out an amazing defense, and getting already two down by, by PS, just this back and forth in the mid is a lot quicker than typically is expected of this map mode. If you see the KAs at the top of the screen, the Squiffer already with 5 KA. Now, you can get a lot of assist with point sensors and armor on that, but we've already seen the Squiffer get several big uh, shots there. So, uh, Squiffer so far coming out pretty handy for Team PS as we see Knights of Queens trying to create an opportunity to get their 20 clams into the basket. And they do get a pick there, and they do have bubbles and rain to work with. And once again, as we mentioned before, the bridge is open, and that is the route Knights of Queens is going to take to get this first push. Absolutely. Two clams in the basket, bringing it down to 60. And Elite here maybe choosing to back up, and very wisely moving back out of that push. It will be the end of it, but, I mean, two footballs is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> Deps, definitely, <laughs> in the first two minutes here. Um, team's trying to establish control of mid here as um, as uh, Knights of Queens do see the flank coming down. Now, the bridge not open, so PS isn't able to kind of slip in through there. They're going to have to find a way to go through Carousel, but Knights of Queens doing a good job of kind of locking it down here, at least initially. And Neo Yuga doing a good job of camping that power claim, so it is going to be lost for PS as we see Knights of Queens looking to get another push going here, once again taking advantage of the fact that the bridge is open. Yeah, they're, it looks like they're taking this one a little bit slower, which um, I'm not uh, entirely against. They had one football up, but not a whole lot of their teammates were in mid, so they have decided to back up and not push that advantage that they had just yet, playing a little bit more patient, and unfortunately that may have given PS the opportunity to move up and try to make that push in return, but... There goes that bridge again, so... Yes, PS trying to find an opportunity to get uh, get some clams in. We do see a jump coming in here. Oh, and PS able to find a way behind uh, the enemy lines, but missed the throw, and I don't know if they're going to find a way to get back to that power claim. A nice kill there by Dad Yuza, though, who was able to get a pick that saves the power clam, and here comes one more, but throws it up against the wall, gets rejected, but NASA gets the rebound and throws it in. Can the mini find a way to get lead? But no! So, a... <laughs> A, a crafty push there by PS, but it just falls short of taking the lead. Uh, the tie will go in the favor of uh, Knights of Queens now. And look, here comes a push coming out from them with 27 clams to go, Lily. Yeah, unfortunately, that didn't quite take a lead as they wanted it to, but Knights of Queen is going to get shut down on this push. They had a couple specials coming out, and they had a little bit of an advantage, but PS was there to stop most of it until this last football comes on in. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that's going to do too much for them in terms of points, but it's definitely caused a bit of a distraction. Yeah, you did see uh, Yuga trying to find a way through the enemy elbow there to get some follow-up clams, so they only uh, managed to uh, erase half of their penalty points, Knights of Queens that is. So, uh, but PS in a great position here, as you see the Squiffer getting another key pick there. Uh, the bridge should be opening up soon if they, in fact it's opening up right now, and armor is coming out. All they have to do is pop the basket open and then throw in one clam to take lead. 
Booyah Bomb coming in, but the T-Tech does go down for PS with about 15 seconds left to go. They have all the clams they need. They just need to find a way to get some picks, but two players going down. Make that three. The K-Pro's the last real threat to do something, but they need to find a way to pick up those clams, and with everybody getting white, a Knights of Queens popping the basket just for good measure. A nice hold there by Knights of Queens, who goes up one nothing in this best of five. And that was honestly a beautiful match between the two. It didn't seem too unbalanced. There was a lot of really good neutral game happening in the middle, but unfortunately, Knights of Queen just got those pushes in first and foremost, and Neo Yuga popping a 17KA to cap off that match. Yeah, Foil Squeezer is a really good pick for that map, especially that mode. But you saw, um, you saw them doing a lot of damage by only popping off three bubble specials. Um, so getting a lot of work done with just the main weapon, which is a, a really difficult weapon to use, but in the right hands, it can be extremely deadly, as we saw right there in game one. Yeah, I mean, Squeezer's been at the uh, fairly high up in the meta for quite a while now because of that really quick bubble pop and even a little while ago when they had nerfed very slightly the bubble sizes it didn't really affect squeezer that much people were still running it pretty frequently yeah it, it did not i think um i think the bubbles actually went went up like it like they added 10 more points to the uh how much points it takes to build up bubbles but even with that yeah, yeah we haven't seen also, uh... squeezer jumped off at all yeah, and they also they very slightly nerfed the sizes of the bubbles when they come out, but that just made people run more uh, special power. So was there? It feels more like they just added a little bit of a buff than anything else. So here we go to game two, which is tower control at the reef, um, and we do see a ball point and a remix coming out as anchors from both teams on a map that um, we we haven't seen too many chargers on recently. So. Um, but it, honestly, from Knights of Queens, this is kind of a pretty standard comp here. Pro, Junior, K-Shot, and Remix for a map like this. Yeah, I will say that Junior on Tower Control is a little bit of a weird pick, but uh, we'll see how they do with it, I guess. You say that like you're a Junior main or something. You might have <laughs> I mean, that imagine. imagine. <laughs> Knights of Queens getting a lot of picks early here as they look to get their first push. A beacon going down uh, to help keep this push going as players can jump back in as they die. But uh, PS having difficulties even getting to the, the tower as the first checkpoint falls very quickly for Knights of uh, Queens. Uh, however, two players going down for each side, so this might stall the tower a little bit. As and I say that, one more player hops back on. So uh, the second checkpoint, oh, is so far has been defended by uh, PS, but you see the push is not quite over yet, Lily. Yeah, typically on how this map is is ordered, it can be pretty lockout heavy. So even when you're two down, continuing on that tower and continuing to make the push. It's usually not a bad situation. You can just wait for your teammates to come back in. And it looks like that was what they opted to do. They're still fighting for tower over on the left-hand side, but all of this contention on bridge with only two players left up, now is about the time where you want to back up and try to re-establish back on your own side of the map to prepare for a push returning from PS. And you see PS hopping on the tower here, getting their push, uh, first push of the game going. You see NASA trying to clear out the alley there, um, which is a critical portion of the map that you need to control um, especially when you want to get to that second checkpoint that tree kind of does a good job of blocking attacks uh, from the alley but you see uh, the the Kinsa machine there cleaning up and able to but now that the Kinsa machine is the last player alive it's a 1v1 between the remix um, oh and the remix does fall down so the Kinsa machine does get the pick there I don't know if any jumps came in but that should stall the push at least for now um, for PS Absolutely, but I mean, there's no discounting clearing that first checkpoint. It's it's a fairly easy one to make fall, but still an important part of getting this to the second checkpoint, which is a little bit more game deciding. Yes, and as we reach the halfway point here, as you mentioned, all PS has to do to get the lead is just basically get to the second checkpoint, as Knights of Queen have not yet... Um, uh, fully arrived at the second point. However, with a pick here on the junior, 
um, Knights of Queen looking to get to that second checkpoint now and try to find a way to get at the ball. And with Neo Yuga getting a huge pick right there on the street, and no any, uh, no PS players even where near the tower, just missiles coming in to try to slow this down. That second checkpoint will fall, and this third checkpoint, which lasts for about half a second, will likely fall as well. Yeah, and with that third checkpoint falling, I mean, pushing back from this, it's an uphill battle for PS, for sure. Knights of Queen has the advantage here, even with two players down, they're just going to wait and pick off a few if they can. Neo Yuga waiting for a cheeky little flank, but <laughs> might need to back off of this. Unfortunately, it does go down. Yes, two players going down uh, for the side of Knights of Queen. Uh, make that three as NASA gets a nice pick there as they look to establish control and love. They are down by two checkpoints. Um, however, that second checkpoint that they're, or this first checkpoint that they're going to be attacking uh, coming up is the more critical one. Again, that third and final checkpoint only lasts for like half a second if you have one or even two players on the tower. So with one minute left to go here, even though they're down by two checkpoints, it's totally, it's not totally out of the question, especially if NASA, oh, I was about to say is NASA keeps getting picks, but NASA does go down, and that is a fight for Knights of Queen with about 45 seconds left to go in a two-checkpoint lead. That's super unfortunate, too. If they had managed to get at least one of those picks, they might have been able to push that tower to the second checkpoint, which would have made this a lot easier. If all you have to do is clear that third checkpoint in overtime, you're in a pretty good position, but clearing both second and third, nearing 30 seconds left in the match, it, I'm getting a bit nervous. Well, with two players down now for Knights of Queens, McDuck 3. And once again, NASA NASA getting a lot of key uh, key kills here. Is going to need to find a way to get several more, however, if they want to find a way to get past the second checkpoint. We see a Booyah Bomb coming out. Um, but the K-Shot on Knights of Queen has been lighting up PS here, already with 16k8. So they're going to need to find a way to eliminate them. But with rain coming across tower, and that is a full wipe. Wow, it seemed like they lost everybody right at the same time. So there you go, Knights of Queen going up 2-0 in this best of five, putting PS on the brink of being sent to the loser's bracket early in this tournament. That was so unfortunate. It looked like there was just enough damage on them from the rain that a single slosh from the from the Keishin just took out two at once, which is... Uh, it hurts my heart in overtime on a checkpoint. Not much place to go. Yeah, every time PS reached that second checkpoint, they were just getting bombarded by everything that Knights of Queen could throw at them. And they, it just seemed like they had no chance of getting past that second one there. Um, but we're now going to move on to game three. If Knights of Queen can win this one, they will advance. This is going to be Splat Zones at Albacore Hotel. Lily, this used to be a map and mode where ballpoint was a requirement. Sometimes two, maybe even three ballpoints. Um, and we have seen a ballpoint come out earlier uh, in this set. So that might be something we see from uh, at least one team going into this one. Absolutely. And we've also seen uh, some fairly midline heavy comps from both of these teams. So I'm not terribly worried about either of them. It's, if we were looking at comps that were pretty frontline heavy, I would be uh, leaning more one way or the other. But honestly, like they both have the range and have demonstrated the range needed to take this either way. Yeah. And, and if you're Team PS here, you've had your opportunities to. Uh, especially in that clan blitz game you had your opportunities to kind of take lead uh, late in the game there the the tower control game seemed a little bit more in the favor of knights of queen but this is still it's it's still not out of the question that a uh, team ps here can pull off at least one win in this game three and maybe try to ride ride some momentum uh throughout the rest of the set but uh obviously if you're knights of queen you want to get this one over with and not give the opposing team any hope as we just uh <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm I'm just I'm not saying to get out your brooms, but I'm saying that I would be opposed to three more games. You know? And we're gonna go ahead and get started. We see a sloshing machine. Is that a Neo or a vanilla? We're gonna have to wait for that. That is a vanilla, so a stingray. Uh, coming out from PS from the sloshing machine, as long as as well as the ballpoint, but on the side of um of a PS. Uh, PS is the blue team. We do see a scoped E-leader trying to take advantage of the range that works out really well in this map. I, we've 
We've been seeing a few unorthodox picks here today, and I think this one really takes the cake. A vanilla slashin is really just not something anyone ever plays <laughs> on anything. So, um, I mean, I'll give it to them. They're, they've surprised me. <laughs> and PS coming out here with the early lead um, with about 50 points of rain, but there we see the Stingray. Well, actually, no, it's the Stingray combined with the ball point, getting the, the takedown on the inkjet there. You know, uh, Stingray, I, I can see it for this map, just because if you're on the side that we see the ball point here, firing the Stingray across the zone can do a lot to kind of clear people out of the way, and I think that's probably the mindset Knights of uh, Queen is looking to go with here, as you see the flanking ball point. Getting a huge pick on the E-leader there, and throwing rain to boot, so Knights of Queen going to get control of the uh, PS street here, and that's a key area you want to control when you're doing a lockout. Absolutely, and when they were making that push, they also managed to get two down on the side of PS, so uh, Knights of Queen is doing a really good job so far, holding some aggression and keeping forward. This zone is notoriously awful to cap, so three players coming in from PS might do it, but there we go, a beautiful cap and penalty applied uh, just before Knights of Queen was able to take lead. NASA applying the bubbles from the, uh, from the uh, Splattershot Pro Forge. Um, not the not the Kinsa with Booyah Bomb, and those bubbles really paid off there as um, PS was able to cap zone and hold on to the lead. However, we see the zone currently being stalled out with the E-Leader down to the side of PS. The E-Leader having a little bit of difficulty getting established and getting comfortable, but if uh, PS can find a way to do just that, the E-Leader should be able to take control of... Uh, the Knights and Queen, or at least mid there, so that uh, PS... Oh, actually, Knights and Queen almost taking the lead here. The Stingray coming out as well. Gonna take down the Inkjet yet again. So the Stingray coming up with huge plays for Knights of Queen, who do take lead with about 20 seconds left to go. And two players down for PS. It's gonna be a difficult time. Even with this rain, they're gonna have a hard time trying to stall this zone. One more player going down, and that should just about do it. Knights of Queen... We'll win this one and we'll sweep team. Pss, 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 pss. <laughs> just, just one last pss, pss, pss at the end there for them. Unfortunately, they did get fully taken out. I was a little bit concerned at the end there when Knights of Queen uh, trailed some missiles across zone while some players were coming back in with some bubbles. I, I was worried that that was going to cap it for them, but they managed to hold out. And I, I mean, I'll give it to them. They they pulled out some some interesting weapons throughout all this and managed to clutch a win. Yeah, I'm. You know, it's it's exciting to see some kind of unorthodox stuff. It, it was cool seeing a vanilla sloshing machine with Stingray and the Stingray coming in clutch in several areas there, uh, both to help stall the zone initially by getting the, the pick on the inkjet and second to help hold on to control of the zone there. So, uh, vanilla sloshing machine, possibly the <laughs> new meta for that map and map. Absolutely.